All right, what is going on guys? We just got done with the UFC 284 and I just wanna give you my initial thoughts and reactions for the co-main and the main event. I don't really wanna talk about any of the other fights on the main card uh, besides the main co-main event. <clears throat> if it was the original card, I would've been really hyped to talk about it. Um, but unfortunately, we lost a couple of really good fights. Uh, co-main event, Yair Rodriguez versus Josh Emmett. Um, it was a good fight while it lasted. Uh, to pretty much sum this up, Yair Rodriguez was landing a lot of his creative striking that he uses, both with his kicks and his punches. Um, and threw something at Josh Emmett. Josh Emmett took him down and ended up getting locked up into a triangle. And he finished him in the second round with a triangle. Um, I gave the first round to Yair Rodriguez as well as two of the judges. One of the judges did give the first round to Josh Emmett, but uh, yeah, so he will be fighting Volk next for the undisputed featherweight championship, which one thing I do want to slightly touch on real quick is they do put these, uh, I'm gonna take my glasses off real quick. They do put those interim belts out a lot. And I feel like it might bring a little bit more hype around it when there's a belt on the line for the fight. But I do, they really didn't need to do that. It could really could have just been a number one contenders fight, but I guess that if you put an interim belt on the line, it definitely makes it the number one contenders fight because you are the interim champion. So you therefore have to fight the undisputed champion. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much to sum it up. That's kind of how I thought the fight would go. Um, I just Josh Emmett. Don't get me wrong. Josh Emmett did land a couple of solid strikes, but. Really, he had about a puncher's chance of winning. I thought Yair Rodriguez would be able to use his rangy distance and his long limbs and his creative striking that he always uses, and that's what he did. Well, what he did most of the fight, uh, except to secure the victory. Um, but moving on, Islam Mahashev versus Alexander Volkanovsky. What a great fight that was! Um, I really, it, it was exciting the entire time. Everybody was questioning could, if everybody knew Islam was going to try and take and most likely take Alexander down, but could he get back up was the question. And that question was answered. Yes, he could get back up. And I feel like it did answer some questions. Is I do not, I do not believe watching this right now that Islam is going to be the greatest lightweight of all time. I do not believe that. Um, we never saw anybody do anything to Habib, which I know Islam is not Habib, but he's his protege. Um, even if Habib is retired now, it doesn't really matter. Everybody, that's what everybody's seen him as, is, is, is Habib's protege. Um, it's supposed to be Habib 2.0. But he, nobody has been able to do that to him. That was by far Islam's toughest fight. And I thought he lost the fight. I thought it was really close, and I'm, I, I could see how he got the win. I understand that. But I personally scored it was round three for Volkanovski, um, round two for Volkanovski, and round five for Volkanovski. That's what I personally scored it. But as soon as the fight was over, I was talking to my wife because she was sitting right next to me. And I said, I think Islam probably won. I scored it for Volk personally, um, barely, just barely. But um, I told her I think Islam probably won, and I said it's gonna be a, it's gonna be a really close on the judges scorecard. And if we take a look, I got the judges scorecard here. If we take a look at the judges scorecard, both two of the three judges had it. What I would would say was it was a very close fight. It was a fair score, 48-47. Derek Cleary, 49-46 to Islam. I have no clue, you know, what he was watching. But that was such a close and competitive fight. There's no way that was a 49-46. Um, so I don't know what some of these judges are watching. And I, it's not that I'm trying to argue that Islam didn't win the fight. I see how he won the fight. But I don't think it was that... It was a lot closer than this judge is making it seem. But where did they go from here? Um, obviously, Volkanovski, he's going to go back down to featherweight and fight Yuri Rodriguez, which, man, after watching the fight that with Josh Emmett he just had, 
I think he's going to be some real big trouble for Alexander Volkanovsky. I, of course, whenever they book that fight, I'll make a breakdown and prediction video about that, give my opinions, uh, initial reactions when it comes out. Um, that's definitely going to be an interesting fight. And another thing that's going to be, I guess, down for Volkanovsky is he, he is now on, he's got to refresh his streak. He was, I think, on the most the highest winning streak in the UFC, and now Islam is. I think Islam is his 13th in a row win. Um, so that's definitely a hit to the, the, the I don't want to say the ego, uh, but the confidence. Now, uh, I think if it wouldn't affect anybody, though. It probably would be Volkanovski. And I was really surprised in this fight. He was going for his own takedowns, and he almost got one. I can't remember. I think it was in the fifth round. It was either the fifth or the third round or both. He, I think it was the fifth round. He almost got a takedown. Um, and right at the last minute, I think it was like a minute, 15, minute, 30 seconds, where he dropped Islam and then started doing the ground and pound, I thought just for a split, split second that because they kind of landed up where Islam was turtled up and Volk was kind of on his side, I thought maybe he was going to be able to get some ground and pound off and finish him right there, which oh, that would have been amazing. I would have loved that. But... Islam was able to get his guard and kind of keep Volk tangled up. He only had about a minute left to work it. So I thought for one point, um, there was a couple times where Islam had Volk's arm pinned and he could have went for an arm bar and probably have got the arm bar because his arm was already extended as he was coming up to try to throw a punch. But I think he really, I think he really rocked Islam bad. And he, I think he just wanted to, I think he knew he probably was going to win the fight, and he just wanted to hold out for that last minute, 40, 50-ish seconds that he had left. Um, so obviously for Volk next, he's going to go back down to featherweight and fight Yair Dorigas. Um And if he beats him, pfft, you're going to have uh, Max Holloway and Arnold Allen are fighting. So if, if Max Holloway beats Arnold Allen, you can't give Max... You cannot give Max Holloway another title shot against Alexander Volkanovsky. He's n he's not won any of them, um, so it'd have to be if he beats Rodriguez. I would say if Ho if Arn Allen beats Max Holloway, he's probably next in line. Um, and then after that, I have absolutely no clue because Volk said he still wants to stay active this year. He still wants to do uh, four fights total this year, which he just had done the one, so it's three more. Um, so you could see Rodriguez would be one. Um, Arnold Allen would be one if he is able to beat Max Holloway. And then other than that, I really don't know. Let's let's take a quick look at the rankings here. Brian Ortega is injured. Josh Emmett just lost. He, he beat the brakes off of the Korean Zabi. Calvin Cater is injured. Uh, Giga Kachatze is, or however you say his name, he, I think he is injured, but I'm not 100% sure on that. Ilya Teporia just had that really good win over Bryce Mitchell. And we're then we're getting past the <clears throat> we're getting uh, down to the top ten and top fifteen. So none of those people are close to a title shot. So it's kind of surprising that like let's hypothetically say for Volkanovski if he beats Yair Rodriguez and then if he has to fight Arnold Allen next and he beats Arnold Allen, Ilya Teporia may be next in line with one more win. He may be next in line. For a title shot, that's kind of shocking. Either the very end of this year, uh, or the beginning of next year. That's shocking. Um, as for Islam, what is next for Islam? They asked him that while he was still in the cage, and he says he wants a clear number one contender. He doesn't want any of the. I can't remember what word he used, but pretty much he's talking about like Dustin Poirier, Justin Gaethje, uh, Michael Chandler. He doesn't want any of the people who are just trying to regurgitate up in the top five and keep fighting each other. Um, obviously. Justin Gaethje is fighting Rafael Faziv. So we have some real tests coming up for Islam, I believe. So let's talk about some potential matchups for Islam going down. So obviously Justin Gaethje and Faziv are fighting in, I think it was March at UFC 285. And we'll see how that goes. That'll be the coming event over Kamar Usman and Leon Edwards 3. Um, man, Justin Gaethje, even if he beats Rafael Vaziv, he's not getting a title shot. He's just pretty much, at that point, he's just knocking off contenders. I, 
if for whatever reason, let's say Justin Gaethje beats Rafael Fazeev, goes out there and gets another win, he's not going to beat Islam. He's not going to beat Islam. He's already he lost to Khabib, he lost to Gaethje. He's not beating Islam. Realistically, um, Oliveira. I mean, maybe if he gets two more wins, maybe he could get a title shot. But I don't see that happening until next year. If he did get another title shot, um, Dustin Poirier. I don't believe he's going to be able to beat Islam. Um, maybe if he works on his defensive grappling a little bit more. Um, obviously, he has submissions. <laughs> he got that jujitsu, as he says. Um, but I don't think he's not getting a title shot, even with that win over Chandler. And he doesn't have a fight booked yet. I say the only people, in my opinion, who have a real chance at beating Islam that are in the lightweight division would be Benil Dariush, who's supposed to be fighting Oliveira. Uh, Rafael Fazeev, if he can get through Gaethje, I think he definitely has more power than uh, Volkanovski did. I think some of those shots, Volkan we got to think, Volkanovski dropped Islam. And Fazeev, I mean, even Gaethje, for that matter, hits way harder than... They both hit way harder than Volkanovski. But I don't see Gaethje uh, getting a title shot. Uh, but I can see Fazeev. With the win over Gaethje, um, either Fazeev or Benil Dariush will definitely get a title shot. And I personally think that they shouldn't even book Oliveira versus Dariush. They should just give Dariush the title shot next. I think that's what should happen. Uh, but that probably won't happen. So you have potentially Benil Dariush, if he beats Oliveira, title shot. Uh, and then Rafael Fazeev, if he beats Gaethje, which I know that will be first. He probably won't get a title shot, but he might. He just might, depending on how the timing works with if Dariush is going to fight Oliveira or not. So let's say that they both win. Um, we got them coming up next. And the only other person... I could see potentially coming up, and it's someone Islam has uh, fought before, and that's Armin Sarukian. I think he would have a decent chance at beating Islam. I really do. Um, he's shown every time out he's improved. Every time out he has improved. So I think he potentially, he needs a couple more wins, though. He's ranked number eight currently. I'd say, I don't believe he has a fight book. I think he's looking for a fight. So he gets a couple more wins, and then he'll be, he'll probably be in the title contention. So I think... One of those three opponents are probably more the most likely opponents next for Islam. Um, I'd have to say probably the closest one is Dariush and then Fazeev and then Sarukian at least needs two more wins, I would say, before he can get a title shot. But you never know what's going to happen. Um, but yeah, crazy fight, great fight. Um, I thought Volk won barely, but I see how Islam won. I, I wasn't outraged that Islam won. Um, I was kind of outraged, not outraged. I thought it was a little ridiculous that the one judge did it 49-46. Um, but other than that, leave your guys' thoughts and opinions in the comment section down below. How did you score the fight personally? Um, yeah, that will be it for this video. Make sure you guys like, subscribe, hit that notification bell, and we'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.